Good morning, everyone. Welcome to many of you who are attending mass transfer for the first time. Good morning. So that's the magic of examination, I would say. The moment you say that you are going to have an exam, everybody is somehow able to wake up. There is no other plan and everybody is up here. So 75 or 76 people already on board, more will join. Good morning. Sorry for being late by five minutes. Okay, so let us start today. And uh, those of you who were kind enough to attend the lectures on extraction, uh, know that we have almost completed extraction. In fact, we have. There is one uh, additional topic that is there, extraction with recycle. That's a little bit heavy on derivation, right? Solving a problem with a pen and paper is no longer that fashionable because you can write a small code and you can solve it, but it's a little heavy on the derivation. So in an online class, I will prefer not to teach it. So what we will do today is as follows. Those of you who are very expectantly joined that will straight away get going with an examination. Sorry to disappoint you. As I told, exam will be of 30 minutes. So I think we can pretty well start around 9.20 or 9.25, maybe 9.20. So I will start teaching leaching today. So about an hour, hour and 10 minutes, we will have leaching, uh, have some discussion on leaching. And uh, after that, we will have the examination. Uh, no, it will not be clearly a uh, question. So, yeah, as of now, since you do not know the question, it is not possible to clear my doubt, your doubt. Don't ask such strange questions. I mean, it's not even a doubt. And I must tell that I'm pretty annoyed with the way this batch uh, is behaving. I'm not happy with you. I had taught CPC to this batch. Firstly, I have complained about the attendance. I am not happy with the attendance. I have downloaded the attendance record every day. Right. Other days I do not shout because some 50 people join and there is no point venting my anger on the poor kids who have joined. Because today I know that everybody will join the habitual uh, bunkers. I would say they will all join because today there is an exam. Now you are firstly missing the class in the pretext that it's a Monday morning, eight o'clock. We are unable to get up. We are so busy. This is not done, not well taken. Uh, soon, maybe year, years and a half time depending on whether you are a BTEC or a five year, you will be in your office. And if you try to show this that no Monday mornings, I cannot come. You will soon be back to IIT Kharagpur campus, let me tell you. So take that as a very serious uh, uh, message from my side. Hmm? Second thing is, I we have a WhatsApp group. After every lecture, I share even my PPT slides. Recording is allowed. So all of you who are taking the liberty of missing the classes and listening to my lectures, right? Everything is allowed, but it is completely taken by granted by this batch. When I send the PPT, not even a single person cares to respond. When I send a message to the WhatsApp group, not a single person responds, thank you or noted or whatever. What do you think? It's my responsibility to send after every class, however busy I am, download it, save it as a PDF with all the markings, etc., etc., and send it. Don't tell me that in every lecture or every course that you are attending, this is the custom, that you are garlanded and then uh, everything is sent to you. I know you have attended courses where even recording was not allowed. So don't take my gentleness to be my weakness. Not that I'm, I'm not telling you guys to turn on your camera and solve some uh, uh, assignment or something, right? Makes that I, I am very feeble and weak and you can do whatever you want to do. Basic learning in life is to be kind and generous to people who are good to you. But unfortunately, you don't do that. You are always very responsive to people who howl. You are still, we treat all of you as our kids come out of this, right? N number of times I have told that if you are missing a class, make a habit of sending me an email or WhatsApp, right? Please. Do that. When you people feel free to bunk classes, 
not a single day I have said that I have said I will deregister or this or that. Which are the usual circus that goes on here? What is this? I hope the message is well taken by you. I don't know, Shayan, what you are trying to tell. You have attended the class or not is not a concern. It's a concern for people who have been missing classes. Many of you are missing classes in and out. I have all the details, but I don't feel like opening the Pandora's box and asking why you have missed a class and come up with some answer. I was unwell, I was this, that, I was traveling. It's not taken. So I'm generally very, very kind and good to all of you, but I'm annoyed. And today I thought is the right time. I should share my concerns. And those of you who are feeling that you can look into the videos, recorded videos, right? And can follow the class, you are wrong. You are going to miss out. And I'm sure it's going to be exposed in today's examination. <laughs> Okay, anybody knows what is leaching? Let's get back to business. Anybody knows what is leaching? Particularly, we will be interested to know what is leaching in comparison to extraction. That is the easiest way to build our concepts because when we started talking about extraction, which is again separation of two miscible liquids at every point during the initial hours, right? Uh, we sort of compared or contrasted how extraction is different from distillation. So now that we know extraction, okay, so let me set the ball rolling. Leaching is essentially a technique Yes, Rahul, very close for separating a solid, separating a solute, right, from a carrier. By means of a liquid, solvent, well, but that is also extraction. The difference is the carrier must be a solid. And what about the solute? Generally, it is a solid. But under certain specific cases, can be a liquid too. Classical definition, if you go of leaching, it's a solid. Right? So there are many, many examples, like in metallurgy, there are examples like uh, isolating sugar syrup from sugar beet is an example, right? Making tea or coffee is an example. These are all examples of leaching. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so the classical definition goes, leaching is a preferential, so and I'm teaching from treble, nowhere else. Leaching is a preferential solution of one or more constituents of a solid mixture by contact with a liquid solvent, right? Uh, let us see, I mean, instead of uh, going too much into the details of definition, which you can all read. So leaching originally, and uh, while I talk about it, those of you who are on campus or who are back on campus, or have visited to any good cafe, like a CCD, uh, I'd like all of you to recall, when you order a cup of hot coffee, what do you see they are doing, right? Uh, they typically take some coffee beans, put it in a strainer, 
and then plug it below some machine, right? Instead of that, when we are having, let's say, Nescafe at home or coffee at home, generally it's instant coffee, right? So we take some coffee powder, dissolve it in hot water. Okay, so we will come back to what exactly uh, you get and what by, by which means these companies try to justify that while you get a cup of coffee for 10 bucks in an SK shop, right? You end up paying 150 bucks in a CCD or in an airport. Okay, so leaching originally refers to to percolation of a liquid through a solid bed. So you have essentially what you have is a porous solid bed. Okay, so uh, 96 people on board again. Welcome, and many of you I know I'm welcoming for the first time in my course. Okay, so you have some porous solids, right? So, and then some liquid flows. Right? And there must be some solute. Some solute, let us try to build our concept straight away, uh, which, so when the liquid passes through this, it picks up this solute. Right? So this is in, in principle the process of leaching. Now, whether you do it in a continuously or you do it in a batch or whatever, everything is possible. So this is generally what is known as percolation. In fact, there are several names. For example, many of you know that uh, sometime you say decoxed coffee or decoction. There is a method called decoction, right? By which coffee is sometime made. Percolation is another name. So what are these? They, they are very close to each other. So percolation, we understand that essentially you pass a liquid, right, through a solid bed. Now, we have already identified or we have already understood, or again, we are comparing with respect to extraction, that we have this a solid, which is essentially the carrier, in which some solid solute, right, is attached. Now, uh, when I have mentioned this some solute there, of course, the, you will realize that that problem or that consideration we will not reach today, or I will deliberately not start. The notations in leaching are completely different. Though we use the X and Y and stuff like that, they do not refer to fraction of C, right? Which uh, we, were, we are used to in extraction. Now, one uh, critical question actually comes out from this particular statement. So what have we understood that, okay, or let me just finish off the different types of, uh, sorry, different types of uh, pedagogies that are existent for leaching. Uh, so percolation is one thing. Uh, there is another uh, funny term called uh, lixivation. I do not expect anyone to know it, not that it is very important also. Uh, it is synonymous to leaching. Just one second.
Okay. Synonymous to leaching uh, originally refers to leaching of alkali from wood ash. This is what is called lexivation. Okay. Now, before we move on, let us just have a look at this particular statement. So what we understand that we have a carrier, which is a solid. So you can do either way. So you can have a bed of these solids. It's a very interesting, this introduction to leaching and the concepts. There is some concept called practical equilibrium. That's one of the most amazing concepts you can have. So you can either have a bed of this solid through which liquid passes, right? Or you can simply take a pool of liquid and put the solid. Right? Now, when I say that uh, put the solid, what solid are we referring to? Carrier containing the solute. So either way, the same thing will happen. This is more likely to be a continuous process. Right? This is more likely to be a continuous process. Where uh, ideally pure solvent enters and goes out with the solute, the solute concentration increases. Or here, what happens is the solute concentration increases with time. Okay, so this we understand. Is it clear to everyone? The basic concept of leaching? Yes? Is it clear to everyone that everybody can correlate leaching, how, what it is roughly, and how it is different from extraction? So, others? Shayon, Shomi, Varun, Adrija, Rahul, these are very, very regular students. What are the others doing? I'm not teaching here to five people, right? Still some 20 people, I'm not happy. One year, I understand uh, the, the fatigue of uh, online classes, everything, but I am also fatigued. And when you guys were in your second year, right, you, you were such a vibrant batch. One year, more than Corona, you have become very swollen headed, this batch, I'm sorry to say. The way this batch responds, even your IT instability in, in your senior batches, a lot of fourth years are there. After every class, right, I send this PPT and they understand the worth of the, of the gentleness, of the, of the kindness of the action. Every senior student, it's not like the MTEX only are writing, yes, sir, thank you, sir, to oil me. Your own seniors, again, cream de la cream of the batch, 
they're all so kind and polite. What is wrong with this batch? I mean, I'm sending the PPTs, it's like taken for granted. Ah, inko to, isko salary mil rahe, hum logo ko PPT bhejne ke liye. And then at least 25 of you have personally uh, messaged me that how difficult things were if in classes where you were told to turn on your camera, recording was not allowed, this and that. So everything is allowed and then the class takes it for granted. What is this? And if you are getting annoyed, I mean, take it, try to take it in the right spirit. Our intention is not to make you knowledgeable because you see, in the long run, you are nowhere in your job unless you become a professor. You are going to write these equations of N balance, what Rahul or Shayon was very worried. How do we understand it's B free or C free? Right? Do you think I teach you that? I don't teach you that. The take home message from IITs, right? Ideally, that, that's how a class should be. Whatever we teach, we teach you how to learn. And that's, that's the reason our students are doing so successfully or are so successful in every sphere of life. What you learn here is how to learn things, how to understand things. And what is understanding? Understanding is your ability to ask the right question. That's why you retain stuff in classes where you learn which you like. And you completely forget stuff which are taught in classes which you don't like. Right? So being kind, being polite is also part of the learning. We want all of you to come out not only as knowledgeable professionals, but perfect humans. Remember that. So if you are very annoyed, if you are thinking, RME Buddha, he is such a shameless guy asking for some thank yous from us. It doesn't make my head stoop. Only thing I'm trying to tell, I'm, I'm very confident about myself. It doesn't make my head stoop in front of any one of you. Only thing I'm trying to point out is this batch is missing out. Right? I think, I hope you take it in the right spirit. Okay. Now, we just talked about learning is asking the right question. So here, there is a right question. So when we say that we have a career that is solid, and we also have salute that is a solid. So can anybody tell there is a very critical question embedded out here? What is that question? Samira, can you tell? Jyotira Ditya, can you tell? There is a very, very important question out here. Or anybody for that matter? Sneh, can you tell? When I talk about there is a solid, which is the carrier, and there is a salute, which is, which is also a solid. This everybody understands, right? So when we compare leaching already, we just talked about 20 minutes. When we compare leaching with extraction, everybody understands where the difference is. So if we, triangular plot does not work for leaching, but what we understand that out of this, in extraction, this turns out, this is already a solid, and this is also already a solid, right? This is clear to all? So if we still impose or try to understand from the standpoint of a triangular plot, is this clear to all? Shashank, this is clear to you? Padamsi, is it clear to you? Right? Okay. Now, what nobody is asking me, or nobody is asking, Odrija, you tried, good, but that's not the, not the thing that we are looking at. We are looking at something more fundamental, not even related to the solvent. Anybody? Samira, are you there? Varun? Vardhan, are you there? Uh, Samira, anything can you think of? Solid carrier is necessarily required to be porous. 
solid is a homogeneous mixture okay show me very very good thought not fully correct okay there are other simpler methods for solid solid and i aisa nahi hai rahul goldar what we are talking those are no other techniques are there you need leaching only no that's not the solution shraman uh, not fully it's not a question of being homogeneous mixture please please don't think it's an alloy it's not an alloy shomik has used a word has it be porous porous catalyst i don't mix concepts here and there there is no question of catalyst you can simply have a porous material and that's good enough don't mix concepts shan mai thi okay let me ask some other people try to get the answer from the bhavna are you there rohini rohit aditya chawla arjav ayush jay jyotiraditya i called you where are you rahul kumawat those of you who i am calling at least you respond if you can't answer please respond avais sajjad shoaib shoaib can you answer shoham can you answer vaishnavi can you answer yashvi can you answer i'd like to get this answer out from the class yeah avais can you would you like to try i have asked something shomik is very close carrier could have high porosity yes varun but you are essentially okay so let me now tell you so the first question that comes out here is where is the solute i use the word porous so we picked it up many times it is porous but when you say it is porous please remember it can be porous or it may not be porous also or in other words the solute can be inside the carrier or at the surface of the carrier and if the solute is at the surface of the carrier or or i must be very careful because i know i am teaching to a super batch or at both places isn't it is this statement clear to everyone so how is it clear to you try is it clear to you say is it clear show me varun odrija so the solute can either be inside the carrier or it can be at the surface of the carrier and now comes the question those of you who are telling for us so if you now think of a situation that you have a carrier and your solute that you are trying to dissolve is out here right so this is the carrier and this is the solute show me can you now say the stuff that you were saying or what varun endorsed if this be the situation right if the solute is within the carrier right then the solute is leachable only when the carrier is porous is this of is this clear now so what we understand where does the solute remain 
So salute can be Mosham, is it clear to you? On the surface, right? So this is the carrier. Vardhan, is it clear to you? This can be the salute. Or Jyotiraditya, is it clear to you? Samira, is it clear to you? Or you can have the carrier and you can have the solvent or salute here. And now the class should understand that in case the solute is inside the carrier, the necessary condition that the material Rahul Goldar, is it clear to you? Shayon Haldar, is it clear to you? That the material is leachable only when it is porous. Odrija, can you understand clearly why porosity is mandatory? Because if the material, if the carrier is not porous, right? Pores are necessary so that what Varun Bhavna absolutely so that the solvent good Udriya solvent can reach the location of the solute and dissolve it. Clear to everyone? I hope it should be clear. This way, by the end of this class, by the time you start writing your examination on extraction, I think all of you will understand what is the basics of leaching. Right, so obviously we understand now that this is easier to do, right? You just put it in the liquid and the, the solute will dissolve or it can be, of course, a combination of both. Turns out that there is a specific name, elutration. I'm not very sure if in mechanical operation or something, you might have come across this term also. So elutration is nothing but leaching of a material when it is largely at the surface. Okay, so <sighs> lixivation is one terminology we learned that is for alkali material from Udash. That's more like a specific technique because please do understand these are extremely useful uh, techniques, extremely useful. Uh, um, can anybody understand that uh, leaching is used in mining and metallurgical industry in a significant way? Anyone in the class from this Jodugora uh, uranium complex? Or I'm sure you have heard that there is close to Tatanagar, there is a uranium corporation is there. So 
they call it mining but actually it's all about leaching so and uh, this also has lot of uh, leaching of alumina separation of ore from gang right also a large amount of actually leaching takes place why we were extracting uh, this uh, crude oil right from the reservoir i hope many of you almost most of you have this idea of what is this particular branch reservoir engineering reservoir engineering is essentially extraction of crude oil right from the um, subsurface deposits and many times um, this oil bed it's not like a tank of uh, oil that's lying below the ocean right many times what happens is the, this oil is stuck within the porous rocks so that's a special case and that is the reason why if you read treble you will find this statement to be slightly odd can be a liquid too so this extraction or of, of this uh, so you can understand that this getting this uh, crude oil ha huh, even uh, something is there we will see however uh, probably we will talk about it right now don't worry uh so this uh, getting this crude oil out right uh, is a tricky thing you must understand it's not extraction right because the carrier which is the porous rocks huh that's a solid so that's not a liquid so it cannot be extraction but it's not fully leaching either because in classical leaching the solute should be a solid which is not the case here but anyway so now we understand and we of course understand that elutration is going to be far easier and less time consuming right so jyotiraditya why don't you check it out and educate us in the next class less time consuming right uh there is one uh quick question okay in situ recovery acha okay so we learned that extraction is preferred at low temperature this everybody agrees this is part of your preparation today preparation for today in case of non porous carrier can we consider leaching of the carrier to separate the solute rahul uh, can you please explain what you are trying to say in case you come out with a material right like this right uh if it is like this what are you saying so plain vanilla answer is leaching can't be done right but then i i was trying to talk about temperature but anyway rahul has a question no no don't say okay sir but engineering is all about at times overriding what nature has provided so can anybody think under what condition leaching can be done here Uh, rahul's comment is very strange in case of non porous carrier can we consider leaching of the carrier to separate the solute it doesn't work brittle solid uh, rishi aravar uh, i don't know what exactly you meant but uh, i mean whether the solid yeah absolutely varun perfect so what you should do is no 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 sponge leaching solid brittle brittle solid these do not work see shayon maithi or rishi aravar when are you telling all these things this carrier comes with its own property so suddenly you cannot say that just because rahul goldar is stuck up he is unable to leach you cannot say that it becomes spongy or it becomes brittle or whatever 
A much better answer is size reduction. Right? Much better answer is try to do a size reduction so that what happens it becomes like this. All of you have heard those Mumphali, right? In trains or in traveling or whatever, right? It comes two, three of these nuts come inside that uh, pack or whatever it, it is called, the cover. What do you do? You rip open the cover, have access to the nuts and have it. Exactly the same thing. Clear? Rahul, is it clear? Don't complicate things unnecessarily. And you see, I am teaching to a batch who have done mechanical operation, right? And Manish has taught, he teaches well, I know that, right? And so you know that there is possibility of crushing and grinding. Of course, very soon I'm going to tell you about the certain cases where you should not do crushing and grinding, but it can be an option, okay? You have some particle size or whatever, try to break it down. And then what happens once you break it down, you do expect that some part of the leachable solute gets exposed. Okay. Clear everyone. Now the concern that or the comment or the point I was talking to discuss is extraction is generally performed at low temperature. Everybody agrees to this? Low temperature means room temperature. I mean, you do not. Prefer to increase the temperature. Why? I mean, you better agree because uh, there might be questions from this, who knows? Okay. So why don't you, wouldn't you like to go for a high temperature uh, extraction? Shayan Haldar or Shayan Maithi, can you tell? Visibility takes place between higher temperature. So you want uh, your, uh, in extraction, you want carrier A and solvent B to remain immiscible. Right? So naturally you don't want to increase the temperature. Now my question is, would you like to do leaching at high temperature or low temperature? I will just take a minute's break. Fill up the chat box with your comments. Oh, 
very good <laughs> item that okay yeah uh, so now also probably as i just went to open the door uh, it probably thoda dimag ka batti chamka what rahul golda tried to mean so probably he tried to mean that in case of a non porous carrier we can consider leaching of the carrier hmm. so what he is telling very interesting thought that why don't you dissolve the outside core right rahul this is what you meant rahul can anybody say uh, is it feasible jyotiraditya no no feasible to theek hai but any observation so what he has thought about is nothing but elutrition right no it doesn't depend on any solvent what you are saying is nothing but elutrition isn't it rahul is it clear so all you are trying to do is that you are trying to dissolve the outer surface so as if no it's not surface leaching aditya it is essentially this is yeah so the essentially rishi is correct so in that case what is happening you are essentially considering your carrier as the solute right jyotiraditya don't say surface leaching don't introduce this additional terms so this is a lutration rahul is it clear see even a wrong doubt can lead to so much interesting understanding of science it should be feasible we don't even have to no adrija that is not the point that is that is certainly that is not the point i am trying to emphasize look at rishi uh, who is that rishi yaravar right yeah <clears throat> rishi is coming so if rahul is able to find out right a suitable solvent that dissolves listen to me carefully all of you if he is able to find out a suitable solvent that dissolves the carrier so that the inner so called solute is revealed then actually what is happening is the carrier is behaving as the solute right and the so called solute which we were targeting to be the solute is actually behaving like a carrier where the leachable solute is stuck outside is it clear odrija Rishi, you have got it perfectly, and, and is it clear to the whole class? Uh, I do. I hate having elite discussions with five people. Samira, is it clear? Adhija, is it clear? Right. So Rahul, very good thought, but in in that particular case, you are saying yes without thinking about the consequence. So that if if you actually do that. i i really love rishi aravar's answer you are essentially swapping between the solute and the carrier right so this is nothing but elutrition it becomes elutrition again but if you still want to have your so of course whether this is feasible or not depends on availability of solvent and in many cases so now in fact rahul himself was telling that availability of solvent in many cases what happens is the carrier does not dissolve easily dissolve in any solvent okay so next the question that i asked was that uh, would you like to do leaching at high temperature or low temperature and the answer is solvent 
should be at high temperature. Very interesting as solid solubility increases, generally increases with temperature. How many of you have seen how cold coffee is made? Check it out. Because every morning when we are making tea or coffee and we are adding sugar, it's hot water, right? And you will soon understand why it happens. So you all know that if you just take some water at room temperature, put some coffee powder, even the instant coffee, take some water and you try to dissolve. Not only it's cold, we are used to having it as hot drinks, but it don't dissolve. And here is the answer. Because any solid dissolves better at higher temperature. Okay. Now comes another uh, specific name, decoction. Anybody knows what is decoction? Anyone? Sne? Rishi? Shwaib? Chavi? Yashvi? Yash, Vivek Surekha, Vaishnavi, solution after reaching Varun, no. Sridipta, anyone? Picoction, have you heard that term? Anywhere? Has anybody heard that term? And if you have heard that term, yeah, it's coffee. It is associated to coffee. Concentrating medical solution. Rishi, probably not. Varun, yeah, coffee. Many times. So how many of you have heard the term? Of course, the South Indians will probably hear it more because they are still used to having filter coffee. Right? Uh, most of us in this part of the country are used to instant coffee. Go abroad. US, for example, it's all decoxed coffee. Very simple. Anybody else wants to try it? Acha, how many of you have seen this uh, in our, even in our own CCD, how they make coffee? Have you ever seen, or if you show me very close now, now very, very good, very close. Does not involve boiling, but very close. I think you are, you are so can you try to give a better answer? A little bit detailed answer, Shomik. Within the framework of leaching. Anybody else? Padamsi? Vaishnavi, are you there? I think I called you three, four times and no response. Okay, none of you are getting it correctly. Yashvi, are you there? Simple. When the leaching, when the solute solvent, now it comes the correct answer, Shashank Gautam. I don't know if you have checked in the net or whatever, but it's the correct answer. No, concentrating coffee using leaching, no. When the solvent used for leaching, Shashank has given absolutely correct answer. The solvent used for leaching is at its boiling point. So that means that not only you are doing your leaching at a higher temperature, right? Leaching at a higher temperature, but essentially what you are doing is 
you are doing leaching at the maximum possible temperature under atmospheric pressure. Is it clear to all? Now it's a tricky situation in the sense that instead of boiling, instead of sending the liquid at the boiling temperature, if you now send the liquid in the vapor phase, will that help? So when I say it's at the maximum possible temperature, any one of you can argue. Why, sir, why it is maximum possible temperature? We can heat up, heat it up further, right? We can go to the vapor phase and we can use superheated vapor, right? So is that going to help? Yes. Very good, Shankar. It will not be much efficient, Rashayan. Please give specific answers. These type of uh, very uh, casual uh, sales stock doesn't help. It will not be much efficient. Yes, so solubility will drastically drop if you go to the vapor phase, right? This is something very fundamental. Solubility of a liquid in a liquid is far, far higher than solubility in a vapor. So here is the trick that you should try to go for as high temperature as possible, but your solvent should be in the liquid phase, right? So as high temperature as possible for the solvent, but it should be at the, uh, it should be in the liquid phase. Clear to everyone? So that way, decoction is done at maximum possible temperature. If you want to leach at a higher temperature, what would be a solution? What would be the, what you have to do? Very simple. Sne, if you would like to do, let's say we have normal boiling point TB and we want to do a leaching at an even higher temperature, depending on the process requirement, increase pressure, perfect. So that is possible only if you increase pressure. So next time onwards, any one of you who go to CCD and order for a cup of hot coffee, right? Kindly check what is being done. So they take some coffee powder, in a strainer type of a thing, they put it below. Huh? There is a knob type of a thing in the coffee machine, right? And uh, then what happens is some coffee liquid, right, drops into your cup. Has anybody seen this? Has anybody seen this? Yes or no? Nobody has seen this. So next time you go, any one of you, of course, now name will be after me that we deserve a CCD treat, right? So yeah, I will take probably. 
uh, and I will make each one of you see how this is done. Okay, now that most of you are back on campus, so we can actually plan that treat. So that solvent containing the solute that is the coffee that the chemical of coffee that adds aroma and flavor huh, is collected. Devesh, are you there? Right? And after uh, a while, you will see that this still remains full of some coffee powder, which they simply throw away. Right? Those of you whose home you use uh, a decoction machine or you make coffee from a filter coffee, this is very common. That you see that after coffee is made, some coffee powder is thrown away. This at least some of you have seen. People from southern part of the country. Right? So now the class understands what you do. What about tea bag? Tea bag is actually very interesting. So you have a bag, which is just to hold the chai ka patti. And now, all of you understand what is a dried tea leaf? What is the solute here? The tea. Right? Solvent is hot water. Chai patti is the carrier. And even after you make tea, either following the normal route, right? or uh, you use a tea bag, you have to throw away the chai kapatti, right? The tea leaves. So that is essentially the carrier from which the required or the desired chemical has been leached out. So is it clear to all? These are very simple examples. And uh, many times when you make, when you are making or your mom is making tea or your anybody in your family is making tea, right? you tend to boil it. And this is particularly valid for people coming from the northern part of the country, right? Where you mix milk and water, put the tea leaves in that and simply boil it. So what are you doing? This Some, some of you know this, that you put in a container, right? So you put in a container, this tea leaves. Why only Rahul Goldar has to re respond? There are no people from the northern part of the country. Tea and milk many times. Snay is from Kanpur. Nobody from up Delhi or Punjab or Haryana where they all make tea with by boiling it in tea and milk, right? So what you are essentially doing, you are unknowingly doing decoction. If you are taking it, making tea at a boiling temperature, okay? Uh, yeah. So another example is uh, separating sugar from sugar beets. So what you typically do is that you take the sugar beets, right? And you put them at high temperature. How many people have seen a sugar beet or sugar cane? It's not actually beet, it's actually the sugar cane. Sugar canes are long. So 
so what you do so if it is long what is going to happen the hot water will take lot of time to diffuse right therefore you typically cut it into small bits often for biological materials you do not want to do crushing because what happens is many times the desirable chemical or desirable component is within the cell right so if you put it in hot water because of due to osmosis it gets dissolved in water and comes out so if you crush it right uh, you may end up spoiling the cellulose matrix and the taste becomes bad or whatever so sometimes it is not done okay now uh, uh solute is may not be in the liquid state uh, sugar may not be always in the liquid state or maybe in the liquid state i am not very sure just check it out yeah it can be liquid state also uh, there is one quick question which i will raise at least and we are now running out of time because we must finish the class by 9:20 is so if we agree that uh, let's say i am drawing a simplified picture and this the class should be able to understand now it's a simplified picture looks very funny and odd but it's okay so the question is can you leach out all the solute from a pore don't read my mind and try to give a one word answer we have 5 minutes to discuss on this so final question we will go into more rigorous mathematical formulation from the next class can you go to this inlet and outlet is the same anything else so who cares don't you use the same door for entering and leaving your home rishi Samira Carrier and solute are insoluble they are that condition is granted to get an answer good answer to this question you need to you need to understand that more soluble solute you need to understand that in diffusion that diffusion is extremely important in leaching right so does it sound a bell so what you have yes shraman so what exactly is the shankar and shaman very very good answer so initially you have pure liquid there is some merit in what rahul said so first the liquid 
enters through the pore, right? So liquid enters through the pore. Number two, there is in situ dissolution inside the pore. That's also done. So now there is a concentration gradient. So the solute molecules diffuse out. But the problem that happens is after a while, the CNI reduces and CNO increases and eventually some sort of an equilibrium concentration is attained. And then there is no driving force or mass transfer for diffusion. So whatever you are actually throwing away, all the time it contains some amount of solute. Is it clear to all that you can never, never achieve this? You can never clean the pore fully. Is it clear? So I'll stop now. Is it clear to all? So seven people have joined after the class has started. I. You write the examination, but I preserve my right of uh, accepting your answer scripts or not. And uh, I will not evaluate anybody's answer script who is not logged into uh, Microsoft Teams during the entire duration of examination. So you must be here. And if I feel like I might. Shayan, what is infinitely diluted solution? You have to replenish, you have to keep on replenishing the solvent, right? Don't use uh, terms, uh, I mean, what is infinite dilution? Whatever you, infinite dilution, if you, if you are looking at a batch process, right? Then eventually whatever dilution you take, the concentration will slowly go up. So that is the advantage of a continuous process, right? We, when we were discussing it, it was in the context of a continuous process, batch process. Now, continuous process comes with some other additional problem, which we will discuss in the next class. All of you should be here. Ashvi, I called you several times. You did not respond, which I have not liked. Uh, all of you should be here. Uh, all of you sit properly, because if I feel like I might ask any one of you to turn on your camera during the examination. Uh, so I don't want to see people sitting in uh, type of dresses, right? I think it did not happen to this class instability. We had great fun one day. Somebody's camera got, uh, got turned on while he was brushing, which is fun. But anyway, so be prepared. So all the best. So what I'm doing now is I am now going to send the exam link in a minute's time. I'm going to send it here in this... Uh, chat, MS Teams chat, right? As well as uh, in the WhatsApp chat. If anybody submits more than one answer uh, from two device, three device, this and that, I will not accept any one of the answers. So please limit yourself to only one answer. If you have any problem, my WhatsApp is there. Please contact me. You have it's 9:20 now, so here is your question paper. 9:50, your time will be over. All the best, and I'm sharing it in WhatsApp also.
somebody is joining the group today wonderful time starts now three people have joined today wow 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 time starts now
Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Smith and now as always I will be doing absolutely Before we start with today's video, I just want to quickly acknowledge that there are much more important things happening out there in the world right now that are not
Excuse me, sir. Who is that? Sir, how much time? Ten, sir, yeah, how much time? Ten exactly ten minutes left. Five minutes more, people start submitting slowly. 
because uh, don't forget that during submission you might have to identify zebra crossings mountains shoe chappal dog car whatever i'm going to close the submission link exactly in 5 minutes time Three minutes. People, please submit two minutes more. last minute we start submitting one more minute is not going to make you get 50 out of 50 to avoid last minute hassle please submit Thank <laughs> you. 
12 more people to submit. It's almost a countdown now. Five, four, three, two, and one. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm closing submissions. Thank you. So I will release the score later today. All the best, and uh, thanks for joining. Those of you who regularly miss classes and uh, care to attend today's class, my earnest request is please Take the trouble, get up early and join the classes. I can guarantee that you are missing out something. Right? So anyway, let us stop today's meeting now and uh, have a nice week, nice day.